Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Friday, May the 1st. Uh, this is uh, Jim Fleeler from Charlotte Products. I have Asquith Williams with me uh, here as well today. And we're continuing our uh, webinar series. This is actually our eighth, uh, eighth week in a row now. Uh, and we plan on keeping them going. So again, welcome. Uh, first, uh, I want to shout out uh, to our Charlotte uh, employees. Uh, a big thank you to every single one of them in production and uh, logistics and the order desk and quality control and R&D and finance. I mean, they're just going over and above the call of duty and, uh, you know, 20 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, and I just want to say thank you from all of us because uh, it's really helping us lower the risk of, uh, of a virus. Um, you know, good afternoon. Hope your families are staying safe. Uh, you know, we appreciate you joining us. And for those that uh, are joining us for the first time, uh, this is actually the highest number of registrants ever uh, for our webinar. So it is gaining in popularity and, and we appreciate uh, you and your time and, uh, and also the opportunity to, for us to uh, talk to you and assist you in any way. So news this week, um, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, he's the uh, leading epidemiologist of infectious diseases there. He stated uh, uh, the day before yesterday that a second round of coronavirus is inevitable. Um, he's the world leading, uh, um, you know, voice in that. Uh, and we should take uh, take to heart the fact that he believes a second wave is coming. And he predicts that this fall, as a matter of fact, of 2020. Um, and what he actually says is we absolutely must be able to, te to test for the virus, track the cases and isolate every single infected person. And that's the key to actually controlling this. Uh, my worry, which is similar to last week, uh, you know, little has been advertised about the proper cleaning protocol and, and the disinfecting of the contact surfaces. And I continue to talk about that. And hopefully everybody that's attending here realizes the strict importance of that. Uh, it's just not about bathing and hand sanitizer and, and um, you know, social distancing. It's the all every single one of those elements that's key. Uh, and in my opinion, not doing proper cleaning protocol and, and disinfecting those high contact surfaces uh, puts us at risk, right? And it could continue and prolong the, the effect of that. So um, what that second wave will most likely do, it will probably create more anxiety than we're in today about the shortage of products, the shortage of finished goods, the shortage of raw materials, whether it be caps or bottles or, or corrugate or disinfectant, the quats that go into them and things like that. You know, so what do we suggest for you? We suggest you start planning a post-coronavirus protection strategy. Right. We're actually working on one for you that we plan on helping you with and introducing next week. And that'll really be a checklist of what should I do when I when my public facility begins to reopen again? You know, because it could you could reopen within the next two or three weeks, maybe, maybe sooner, maybe a little longer. But what are the steps that you put in place to ensure that the public is comfortable with coming back into your facility? Well, lean on us for that advice, because we're going to start uh, promoting that next week, as a matter of fact, with some key checklists and information to help you with that. You know, so uh, without question. So so, uh, you know, on another serious note, um, the pandemic is leading us into a uh, into a different era. Uh, you know, we recommend following credible organizations like the CDC or WHO or Health Canada, you know, and make sure you're purchasing registered disinfectants, DIN numbers, EPA numbers, uh, their apps, and then also dealing with credible manufacturers and distributors. And we've got a, a bunch of those uh, across uh, North America and Canada in particular. Uh, you know, it's proof that the products do what they say well, they, they'll do. There's a lot of all of a sudden people coming out of the woodwork with all kinds of false claims and the copying brands and and uh, putting, uh, you know, false things on on the labels. Just be aware uh, and, and deal with credible sources. And hopefully we're one of those uh, th that you come to first. Don't risk your family's uh, health buying those products. So with that being said, that that's my opening remarks. And uh, and we'll start uh, the session here today. So uh, me, Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Canada. Uh, I get a little tired of that screen actually myself um, and my hair is changing more and more every week because I don't have a uh, access to a barber for sure. So, uh, but anyway, thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about cleaning protocols, obviously to lower the risk of an outbreak. Uh, our weekly series is going to continue. Uh, I have to keep talking ass with him to coming back because uh, uh, he he's uh, he's has busy things to do and a lot of pro production and things. He thinks he's uh, he's not as important as he is, but indeed he is. So keep submitting your questions. We're going to get to those as we go along. 
Uh, we uh, we have an actual responder here uh, right now that's going to answer them as we go along and then we'll answer more at the end as we usually do. Today we're going to talk about food service, uh, uh, food service and food processing and we're and food safety. Right? We're going to talk about our serve clean line. I'm going to review the HACCP principles for food service, uh, some drain solutions and then of course the open open mic with uh, with ask, ask within myself. So really food processing is as essential as healthcare, there's really uh, they're both key elements to the survival of of us, right? I mean, and you you think about uh, diseases and bacteria and viruses and things, and then you think about the human body. Um, it's it's been typically with food service, E. coli and Salmonella are the most common risk and a major risk, by the way, far more so than coronavirus, by the way. Uh, you know, so let's just not forget about those. Uh, because that that's not going away. So now you've got E. coli, you've got salmonella, and you've also got uh, coronavirus as well. So so don't let your guard down around that. Food safety always has to remain a top priority. And really, food service establishments, their major responsibility is for public safety and the prevention of these foodborne illnesses, regardless of whether it's a take-in uh, program or eat-in program. You know, so so just be careful when you're doing that take out and eat in when we get back to that as well. So, and that's one of the responsibilities. You have to wash your hands before preparing food, while you're serving food, and even consider after eating food. And that doesn't matter if you're in a commercial setting or you're actually at home there. So uh, we have similar uh, responsibilities in our residential lives for our families and visitors and, and things like that. So let's make sure we practice that. Uh, this is a uh, some uh, some information from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and that's actually this month. So that's 20, well, actually, sorry, today's May 1st. That was actually last month. So it was actually last week. But the coronavirus is generally thought to be spread from person to person through respiratory droplets. We've talked about that at our webinars. Uh, currently, there's no evidence for support to, to support the transmission of COVID-19 associated with food. That's according to the CDC. Um, you know, it is though possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching any object that the virus is on and then touching their nose, their mouth or their eyes or even open wounds. So just be beware of that when you're doing that, right? Uh, and remember uh, one of the past webinars, we talked about how many times you would touch your face in an hour and, and it's really about 23 times up to about 50 times. So just, just watch it once in a while and you'd be surprised how easy it is to transfer it. But really, Due to the poor survivability of this virus on surfaces, it's likely a very low risk regardless of the temperatures, whether it's ambient or refrigerated or frozen. And we have a lot of those questions is can it survive in the heat? Can it survive in the, in, uh, in the, in the freezer and things like that? So the chances it's slimmer, but also, but if there is a chance, you have to respect it that way. Also raw meat, you want to keep that separated from other food in the refrigerator. A lot of people, you look in the fridges and it's side by side with the lettuce or it's side by side with the, you know, who knows what, but you need to make sure it's separated and uh, and you have to make sure it's cooked well to the right temperature to kill the har harmful germs. So that's why they sell those temperature probes uh, for barbecues and things is to, to guide you safety uh, safely there. Some food uh, safety precautions. You need to assume that every single surface is contaminated, right? Uh, I'm going to show you a video in a few minutes there that talks about a reusable grocery bag. You've heard us with refer to paint on the bottom of the bags. Uh, so if you imagine take your reusable uh, bag, uh, pretend it's painted, and then you set it down on whether it's your car seat or or your bench at home, the counter, the island, the count. It doesn't matter what it is. That you, if you look at that as that could be potentially E. coli, Salmonella, Corona virus or whatever, then maybe you'll get a bit a little bit different of an impression on how easily it can be, can contaminate surfaces and, and make you sick. You know, uh, it can live on uh, surfaces for several days, um, you know, uh, and some people, if you're getting groceries brought home, you're bringing them home, uh, you know, if you are the most sensitive or you have, a, a, a you know, suspect cases or some symptoms, I mean, leaving them outside in a sealed box for two or three days, it will lower the risk as well. Immediately when you you come home take out you should switch out those containers you know for your dishes you don't know who's touched the outside of those containers 
and things. So make sure you're switching them out and stay as, as safe as you can. Uh, disinfect your canned goods, your bags and boxes before putting them away. The video coming up will actually show that a little bit uh, better um, in a residential setting. And, uh, and uh, so you'll enjoy that. And then make sure you're washing your produce with soap and water, at least 20 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever. Rinse it well with cool water and then let it air dry before putting it away. And we'll show you that in the video uh, because uh, you would be surprised what comes off of the produce that you've got there. So uh, I think with that being done, we're going to go to the safety video, uh, food safety video, and it's seven minutes. So I'll see you when you get back. Hi there, Jim Fleeler, Charlotte Products. Today's topic is food safety. Uh, we've got a residential setting here. And uh, what you can see is we've, we've uh, actually taped the area of the counter here with a con and we've identified this side as a contaminated area. And we've identified this area as a clean and disinfected area. So I've still got my groceries in the car. First thing I've done, which is critical, is to come in and absolutely wash my hands thoroughly. And then I've put on gloves because some people could be sensitive with uh, cleaners and disinfectants and things, so I've done that. And my bags are in the car and I'll bring those uh, in shortly. So the first thing I'm going to take my Enviro Solutions ES15. I'm going to totally saturate the area, both sides as a matter of fact. And what you do know, we've been talking about in our seminars, if you have a big area or whatever, you can certainly use the pump up sprayer as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is obviously pre-clean. So I'm just simply going to pre-clean my surface. Any gross film, both sides, just back and forth. Okay, so I've done that. And you can see actually a fair bit of, uh, of, uh, of debris comes off. I'm just simply going to do a fine mist okay and walk away and that's the beauty about ES15 there so uh, we're gonna let that sit okay because we need the dwell time right and I'm going to go and get the groceries now from uh, from the car okay so just I'll be right back okay now that I've got my two areas uh, both disinfected I'm bringing my bags in and what you can see is automatically I've put this bottom down, okay? So if you didn't disinfect that, you're obviously going to have a, a risk of contamination. Like I said before, if you do that, uh, the best thing is to actually tip it on its side so you're not coming into contact. So what I've got here in my two bags, and what you can see is I can disinfect this bag. It's fairly steady I've got a, or stable. I've got a, uh, a paper bag as well. But this plastic bag, which they're, I think, I believe in Canada, they're uh, actually eliminating them all. Uh, but this here, uh, basically what I've got is, I mean, I've got a, a soft area that I really can't disinfect. So I'm going to take my items out of here, which I've got some bananas. I've got a grapefruit. I've got a lime. I've got a tomato and I've got some grapes. So I'm going to go over to the sink and what I've done here is I've done, uh, I've added a little bit of cool water. I've added our Enviro Solutions ES79. That's our dishwashing liquid. It's an Eco Logo certified one as well. And I'm going to let them soak. There's a possibility of there will be insecticides, there will be some pesticides, there will be bird droppings, maybe some insects and things like that. And we just want to make sure we're getting any of that off there because we want to be as safe as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to see what I've got in this bag. And you can see I've got my cornflakes. I've got a little bit of salad dressing. Uh, I've got some beans, a couple of canned goods, and I've got some soup here. And you notice I'm keeping everything on this particular side of the counter. And what I want to do, because the danger of these reusable bags is that people just take, empty them, and then put them back in their vehicle or their, their, uh, their box, and, and you haven't re you've got a risk of, of contamination. So what I want to do is just basically do a, a nice pre-clean, removing gross film, any kind of filth okay and the one thing about this is people generally don't do the inside of the bag and the inside of the bag is really where most of your goods come in contact so I'm just going to put a little bit in here and I'm going to just for time I'm going to speed it up because we don't have the time for dwell time but you want to follow those instructions so and then I may just take this and do the straps right so what I've done is I've got that bag fairly uh, clean now, and I'm gonna set that on the clean and disinfected side so I don't recontaminate it. So I'm gonna take my cloth now. I've got a couple of cans of uh, canned goods, beans. 
I'm just going to wipe these down where any stock clerk or customer maybe decided to grab them and didn't buy it. Set it on my clean side. Okay, so no longer on the contaminated side. I'm going to take my salad dressing. Okay, all of the surface areas that could be a risk. And then when it comes down to the box of cereal, whether it's cereal or cookies or whatever, I basically want to grab, uh, make sure I'm disinfecting an area that anybody absolutely may have touched. You know, the bottom of the shelf, the sides. Now, some people will actually remove the contents of the bag and dispose of the box and put it in a container in the pantry. So I'm going to set that down there as well. Leave all of my contamination stuff there. So let's go to the sink and we're going to do our produce now. So what I've got, I've got my sink a little cool. I put my ES79 in there. And what, all I want to do is just basically, they've soaked, so the detergency is there. Soap kills germs, by the way. I'm going to just give these a little bit of a clean, set them in cool water. I want to let them sit there for a few minutes to make sure they soak and there's nothing there. And things like bananas, you know, don't take for granted that that uh, that nothing grows. I mean, obviously the skin is there, uh, but you still come in contact with skin and, uh, and you could be digesting anything that's on it. So the grapes, okay, just gently massage them a little bit, okay. The soaking actually works really well. And then I've got another lime here, that's what I have. So we're gonna do that, right? So, so now I've washed them. I've removed any insecticides and things. I'm actually letting them soak now. And all I need to do is just pretend for the camera's sake that they've soaked for a few minutes. I'm going to take them out. I am going to set them on a towel to air dry. And that is it. Now, one thing too is if you're a smaller household, and uh, you don't have, you know, you're only going to use a couple of limes and a couple of bananas. You obviously don't want to fill a whole sink full of water. You want to conserve water. So we've just taken a dish here. So what you can see is if you only have a few items, you could just simply soak uh, like so and to save it that way. So uh, another thing we can do is we've got a lot, if you've only got a few, uh, if you're not into doing soap and water, in there and maybe you want to conserve a little bit more water we do have our all organic veggie and produce wash so you can just take this now this is really good uh, for there's no dwell time here this is absolutely great for um, vegetables uh, lettuce spinach you know those kinds of things and you just let it sit sit and go from there so if you're into all organics and you want a, a USDA certified uh, veggie and produce wash then we have it available so I think that really concludes everything. Pat dry, these are ready to go in the crisper. So what I really wanted to point out today is look, there's a risk when you go to the grocery store. There's no question about that. When you come home, if you practice a few wise things, you can lower the risk of an outbreak with, without doubt. Uh, just simply, you don't have to put tape across, but just maybe a sticker that says contaminated and then a cleaned area. And that's good, solid peace of mind. So that's just one way we can help you lower the risk. And, uh, and that's food safety. Thank you. Okay, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, seven minute video. Um, that's some just some precautions for you uh, that you can help uh, lower the risk there. I talked about the all organic veggie wash. There's just a screenshot of it there. It's available. You could just go to uh, allorganicclean.com uh, um, or go to Charlotte Products. Uh, that's there for those that are into all organic uh, cleaners and, and we have that and that'll certainly lower the risk for you. Uh, the food safety of the bag, um, uh, the bag inside and out, you should be doing uh, without doubt. Uh, lots of people do not do that. Uh, the disposable plastic bags, they're going away. Uh, and obviously we can't disinfect and sanitize those. And the paper bags are obviously be, to be used one time and recycled. I think that's their intent for them. But the outside and the inside is uh, is imperative uh, with, without doubt there, okay? Uh, I wanna talk about HACCP here, which really stands for Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points. This is usually used in a commercial setting where processing goes on and it's a preventative approach 
to food safety in those in production processes. So, but these things can be applied at the workplace or at home, uh, you know, but really uh, taking a look at uh, and conducting a hazard analysis. I mean, refrigerator temperatures, food storage, food handling, those are all critical to lowering the risk of E. coli and coronavirus and salmonella and things like that. Identifying those critical control points, like so raw and cooked food temperatures, you know, holding temperatures properly for the length of time you're allowed to hold them depending on the Department of Public Health and Health Canada, avoiding cross-contamination, setting critical limits for each critical control point. So in other words, how long are you allowed to allow food to cool down, for instance? How long are you allowed to have it thaw? Uh, can you refreeze it? You know, things like that. Those are critical limits. Uh, establishing a critical control point uh, that, that gives you the monitoring requirements. So in other words, are you checking your food lines, uh, rotating schedules, you know, the prep areas, hand washing, you know, are you actually monitoring what you need there? Uh, establishing corrective actions. So in other words, making sure you're labeling, clearly labeling and dating products, uh, respecting uh, expiry dates, uh, reworking those temperature checks and maintaining equipment in good uh, proper running order. Uh, developing, uh, and by the way, on equipment, I mean, equipment has lots of nooks and crannies and uh, and uh, and there, there's 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 areas where bacteria and viruses and uh, uh, mold and mildew can build up there. So ensuring you've got that those checks and balances in place. Uh, developing uh, procedures to ensure that the HACCP program is working as intended. So in other words, really practicing good health and uh, and communicating with your people, scoring your results for departments, and and uh, really advertising that there's no reported illness or a decline in illnesses and self monitoring. And then number seven is really making sure you're documenting the record keeping procedures. So with the temperature logs, the receiving logs, uh, the waste sheets, you know, so all of those types of things and you can practice. That's not perfect for a residential situation, but but some of the things we talked about in the video uh, certainly relate to that. Our serve clean programs are really designed around food service, wear, wash and laundry products. And we have a full array uh, for North America and I'll spend a couple of minutes and talk about that. And, and they're really simplified uh, uh, solutions for you for whatever you need. You know, they're innovative formulas, they're simplified. Uh, we do color coding there because training is really, uh, uh, it is really a, it's more of a task than people realize. I mean, turnover in fast food facilities and food service facilities, um, you know, is not unlike anything else in our sanitation industry. Uh, turnover is there, language barriers and things. So, you know, uh, if you can get some color coding and wall charts and all of those things, icons, standard icons that identify we, what I use on the menus to clean and sanitize, what I use in the washrooms, what I use in the and the slicers and the and the, the meat slicing machines and whatever it may be. Uh, and what this really breaks it down into is two areas. It's the front of the house, which is your food, public food service areas. Um, and also the back of the house, which is really where everything happens behind the scenes, just like we showed you last week with our Charlotte production facility there. It's comprehensive, um, you know, it's complete from food service, wear wash and laundry. It's great, uh, we've got all the products that if you've got the dispensers in your facility, uh, we've got all of the goods in the liquids and the cleaners and sanitizers and and uh, destainers and all those things that go in there you know so so it's really customized based on the market experience and there's all kinds of uh um, dispensing options. So here's a uh, here's a view, and some of you are going back to work in the next couple of weeks, opening your facility. So if somebody, if you said, okay, what do I need to clean the back of the house? So what do I need for the kitchen? What do I need for the washroom? What do I need for my three bay sink system? You can see here clearly, color coded, what product I use, where I use it, and on what particular services, surfaces, right? So in the washroom, the same thing, in the three bay sinks. So if you're doing dishwashing pots and pans, and then you need to do a water rinse, and then you need to do a, a 60 second rinse in it with a food service sanitizer and allow it to air dry. All of these things are here. The dispensing systems that you push the button, you fill the sink, and that's it. So from, from training employees, it's very, very easy to come in and say, okay, this is what you do to, to fill the sink with, with your pot and pan detergent. This is what you do to fill the sink with your sanitizer. Here's your BPM papers to test, all of those things. We've talked about that. So you can see we have the cleaning product, the sanitizing product, the heavy duty degreasers, the oven cleaners, the drains, hands, dishwashing, all of those particular things. There's the three bay sink system. Very simple, 
the dispensing is there, the materials are there, color coded wall charts, everything all set to go. So if you, if you're, and then, and, and believe me, I've just heard today, as a matter of fact, that the Department of Public Health and the government have hired 60 new inspectors that are starting almost immediately that will be coming around all of the communities visiting our re, re engagement uh, programs back into your facility. So, so, and they're probably going to be very, uh, uh, they're probably going to be pretty strict this time around. So we, we can help you with these things and that's why we've got it. In the front of the house, what do you do for the tables? What do you do for the chairs? What do you do for the, you know, the, uh, the glass cases where you may sell uh, uh, some takeout items or some desserts and pies and things? I mean, all of those things are here. What do I use to degrease the floor? What colors are involved? What do I use to sanitize? What surfaces? So you can see this is in Canada and the United States. Wear wash and laundry, the same thing for those that have uh, facilities where they do wear washing. So you've got a bar glass wash uh, service there. You've got dishes, you've got laundry, fabrics, linens, things like that. I mean, it's all here. That's all part of our serve clean program. And then we have uh, a lot of different programs uh, that are actually uh, for the craft brewery business. You know, the, you people that have microbreweries where you want parasitic sanitizers or floor sanitizers or high foam products or low foam or or san like whatever. We've got also a brewery program, right? We've also got a bakery program, uh, you know, there. We've got a meat and a poultry program, you know. So, so we have all of these things that we can help you with and that helps you get back to work. And that's really what we're here for. So, so we have concentrated food service programs. Uh, when we talked about our ES uh, 72 and 64 and 364 dispensing programs, we have the same exact dispensing programs uh, set up for uh, for food service. So, so you know, where's the wall charts? You know, so when you have the staff and they say, "What do I clean my tables with? What do I clean my menus with? What do I clean, you know, the uh, the washrooms with?" I mean, all nice, neat, color coded there with the directions and the names and the icons. So anybody of any 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 uh, experience in our sanitation industry can pretty well start from the get-go. Uh, there's a typical dispenser. We have a variable amount of dispensers there, but you know, color-coded. Now, before you go uh, uh, get upset at us, uh, the color-coded trigger sprayers are out of stock right now. The demand has just been absolutely out, out of this world, um, you know, but it's there, but we can help you out with the laminated labels and all of those things, and away we go. We have a, also ones for uh, heavy-duty degreasing, so some facilities that have more of a, of a, of a, a buildup of grease or uh, you know they're dealing with a lot of uh, proteins and things that produce grease I mean we've got we've got those there we've also got the drain solutions we've talked about it before this is a chlorinated powder simply a half a cup or a cup if it's a floor drain I mean sanitized you know deodorized I mean the the bugs the fruit flies the flies all of those things gone I mean that's available it was out of stock and I believe it is back in stock and that would be one of the questions that some of you may want to ask ask with there shortly grease trap drain management programs I mean, they're here, you know, I mean, peace of mind, the dispenser is plug and play, you put it on the wall, you dip the tube in the pail, uh, and, and you're in business. So it automatically starts producing bioenzymes in there to keep your grease traps running free. So these are all branded serve clean. There's a bit of a close up there on uh, basically a three bay sink. And, and you can see on the, uh, on the left, there's, uh, you know, you can see your, your basically your pail and then you can see the drain and that'll go back into your grease trap. And that grease trap is there to prevent uh, greases and, and grime from going into the water treatment. And it's there to, uh, so it's manually, um, you know, cleaned out, which is one of the nastiest jobs we actually have. So what this enzyme does is it goes down and it breaks up and digests and keeps it flowing freely so then you don't need that person to actually manually uh, empty it out and there's a big cost to that without with, without doubt there so uh, a couple of other things we have we have an online learning catalog right uh, there's 22 new courses online here for COVID-19 uh, there's 31 from the ISSA which we are a prestige member of the ISSA which is the International Sanitary Supply Association we have been for many 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 years um, there's 21 new ISSA webinars I know we're doing uh, Charlotte's on a couple of those uh, as well. And now there's also over 350 online courses uh, included in a year subscription. That 350 courses cost you $200. You know, I'm not sure if that's U.S. or Can Canadian. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I mean, uh, but I mean, 350 courses. 
available that are instantly available for you now, right? So that's Charlotte Online Learning. Uh, that's a membership update there. We will be putting more things on there. And uh, again, I'll remind you, every one of these webinars uh, are all backdated from the eight weeks ago. You can go back, anybody can log on our website and go back and re-watch those time and time again and really use them as training for your staff and reminders for you and updates and things like that. So uh, resources, we've put ones in here particularly for food safety and processing, the CDC, the US Food and Drug Administration, the Health Canada Food Safety, the CFIA, which is Canadian Food Inspection Agency. There's a ton of information here that you really you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the public, uh, the safety of the public to actually bring yourself up to speed with these things. And uh, and again, we'll help you with that next week. So so really, before I get to the questions, I just want to close here. Um, uh, you know, we hope you found it uh, useful I, I th and helpful, you know, and thank Thank you again. I mean, our webinars are going to continue uh, next Friday, believe it or not, is May the 8th. I have no idea where April went and March went. I mean, but that'll be number nine. Uh, topics will include uh, the most recent COVID-19 updates, just like we do every week. Uh, but more importantly, next week, we're going to be assisting you with opening your public facilities back to the public with a detailed checklist for cleaning and disinfecting protocol. Our hopes are to have a list of products, what you use and things like that. So, so we're just going to start that to seriously help you with that. Uh, we've been asked all kinds of questions, um, you know, during the week and, and uh, in between. Uh, so we'll probably expand that as well. Uh, so now I, I'm going to join. Uh, I've got Ask with Williams going to join me for uh, questions here again, and we'll put him on the spot. So your questions come in. Uh, we'll answer them here. We have a, a, a person answering the questions as well while we're talking about these ones that the IT director just gave me here. So so uh, Ask with the all set. I'm all set, Jimmy. Nice, nice to nice to be back here that's, with you. That's great. Well, welcome. It's uh, it's starting to turn into a routine. It seems that way. I think you probably normally wanted to take Fridays off or something, didn't you? And you can't now. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, uh, we certainly respect your time and, uh, and thank you. And you're still smiling, you know, still is, smiling. is what you're doing there, even though the pressure there. But, but you know, our number one goal is really uh, is assisting our employees and customers with lowering the risk of an outbreak. You know, we've said stay steadfast to that all year. Um, you know, it's hard to believe that we've conducted eight of these now. Uh, our registration count is going up tremendously. To eight, of these, yeah, eight of them and yeah, actually probably 18. And uh, <laughs> wait till I tell everybody you tried to get out of next week, which, which you can't, you know, so, so you, you can't leave me abandoned because you're, you're the uh, you're you're part of the team there. So uh, most of these questions actually surround uh, food safety uh, appropriately there, and I think uh, most people have learned that they can uh, um, they've got the vi they've learned all about the virus here. So now it's time to get on to well, what are there areas that directly relate to me? You know, okay. um, in a way, and how do I protect my family? So this one's Jamie here. Is uh, thank you for the residential safety tips for food safety. What should I do for handling the three smaller milk bags found inside the main bag of milk? Hmm. That's a very good question, Jim. And Janie, very, very good question. Um, ideally, um, where the milk is packaged is normally a sterile uh, environment. So the, the inner bags are relatively clean, but it does not hurt to give it a little wipe um, with a product like a like ES15 yeah. before putting it in the refrigerator. Yeah, so the outside bag, the right? Outside bag. Because somebody could have come along and, you know, I know how they go in yes. the crates. And, the outside bag. Yeah, and it could be the, the last bag and then the store clerk maybe puts it on top of another crate Absolutely. to take it away. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so, so just like I did the bag. the outside bag and then make sure you wash your hands, of course. Yep. Hands got to be clean and then you take those out. You could wipe down the bags, the inner bags, and then we put Put them in the refrigerator. Yeah. Okay. Good. Can you freeze those bags of milk? You can freeze yeah. those bags of milk. Yeah. Because I, 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 that's just my question you actually. Can. Because you, you know we don't go to the store. We try to avoid it to go to the grocery store every two to three weeks. And my wife buys those bags, mm -hmm. and and uh, she's always asked if you could freeze them. And you uh, could freeze those bags. Yeah. Okay. And you know just store them in the refrigerator. Yeah. You know two days or so and you're good prior to, go. to use. Yes, Excellent. Well, that's it. That's, thanks for asking. So, Janie, not only your question, but my question, too. Uh, here's one from Jonathan. Should I clean out my fridge from time to time and disinfect the compartments and shelves? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, I think I mentioned before that uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is the, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19, they can live in refrigerators. They've done studies where they've seen them in refrigerators, which is about four to six degrees. Um, 
and they they, they stay there and um, they're there for like 29 days. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, clean regularly and disinfect regularly. Okay. The refrigerator. Good, good. Darlene here, I've never heard you talk about an alcohol type hand sanitizer. Do you have one available? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Watch Darlene, what you answer. Darlene, Darlene, you know, uh, <laughs> that's a question we get all the time. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, Perhaps we may have something for you uh, in the very near future. Okay. How's that for an yeah. answer? Okay. Well, that sounds good to me. So, Darlene, stay tuned there. Uh, you may see one there, and Asquith hasn't told me yet, so I'm not quite sure there. Uh, this is miscellaneous. I own a smaller 16-table restaurant. Does it warrant putting in one of your Serve Clean Dilution Control dispensers? Does it have the correct products to clean the front and the back of the restaurant? Well, you did that. Actually, you answered that question earlier in your demonstration. and. Uh, Yes, you can do that quite readily. Uh, you can clean the back and the front of the store. Yeah, I think uh, whoever answered that question, I, I can add to it a little bit there. Number one, it, you'll have two concentrated products for pretty well your whole entire facility. Mm -hmm. If you have a, you may need a third. If you have a, a little bit of a grease, uh, greasier environment and you need a heavy duty to grease your muscle degreaser for the floor, you can add a, a, an also a third concentrate of a specific degreaser. Uh, but it does have degreasing capabilities with the two that are there. Uh, color coded, um, no chemical contact. It'll actually be the least expensive, the ready to use uh, product that you could ever have. Um, I mean, it's not a glug glug. Uh, it's, 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 you know, so if you're on budgetary, you want to really improve your sustainable footprint, you want health and safety, employee wellness, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And if you've got more info or, or need more information, just reach out there. Uh, here's one from Randy. Are you going to continue these webinars? I find them very informative and I have my entire family watching them now. Can we contact you during the week for specific questions? Absolutely. You can call uh, or write and uh, Jim has all the information. So call right anytime. We love to answer all your questions. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to maybe go to Randy's house and watch the family uh, video with him. I wonder <laughs> if Randy's doing that. Uh, you know, would you consider hosting a, hosting a live Meet the Expert panel for asking questions for us all? And how many questions do we field a week? I don't know how many questions we field a week. Hundreds. I mean, yeah, hundreds. So, you know, yeah. I know it's a lot of questions, but yeah. and yes, we'll be open to. Uh, to an open panel, yes. Yeah, maybe you have a different, uh, maybe have one of your R&D people come in or quality can, control people or somebody come in and they we can open they to can, all that. Yeah, yes. okay, anyway, yeah, we're more than happy. I mm -hmm. mean, food safety, by the way, came from your request. That, that wasn't us, that was you asking uh, that, for, that, for that. Information. Yeah. Yes. So, so look at, we're here for you. I mean, we really are. Uh, uh, here's Marianne. How long do you believe the virus will continue? Will you ever get, will we ever get back to the way it was? I don't think we will, but I don't, <laughs> think, take? I don't think we will. And you, uh, Marianne, you and many millions and billions of people are, with, you know, open for the same, the same, have the same question. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we'll have to up our, and maintain our cleaning principles, um, our cleaning protocol. And, um, you know, we're going to have to practice social distancing for a while. Um, and perhaps, uh, we, you know, I don't think we're going to be at the, the, go back to the way we were. I think you're going to see uh, greater efficiencies in cleaning. We're going to, you know, we're going to do a lot of things a lot differently, I think. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever go back. I don't I, think actually, so. I don't think we should go back. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, like I said before, I fly a lot and uh, I haven't been on an airplane in two months. And quite honestly, mm -hmm. I don't miss it. I, I can really do virtual uh, education mm -hmm. sessions and um, and key meetings uh, from the comfort of my home. And as long as yes. you prepare properly. And, and I think it's going to be a long time before we get back there. Here's one for summer barbecues. And it says, <laughs> if summer ever arrives, uh, cooking meat and what about my salads any tips for that for safety well safety you know do what jimmy said earlier uh, you you make sure to uh, separate your groceries clean the outside of the bag the inside of the bag clean your countertops wash your vegetables and very very importantly cook your meat yeah. extremely well and it should get rid of the bugs now you recommend one of those food probes i mean just take their question uh, yes, further yes yes and, and to make any sure idea internal... what that temperature should be because um, well know. it should be well over 150 degrees is that what it is yes okay so yes, because you know viruses and so on uh, uh, would not survive over 150 degrees. Yeah, okay. So that's a good, actually, maybe, uh, you know, Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day is coming up. It wouldn't be, a, I mean, it would be, not maybe be an appropriate gift. gift. 
you know, wouldn't be go. bad there. So if yes. my wife is watching, it may not be a bad, bad thing. <laughs> I usually go when the meat's black, it's done. <laughs> it's, it's what I do there. So <laughs> I see Jim pre-cleaned and disinfected the counter surface. I didn't see him do a water rinse. Do you not have this? I uh, do not have to do this around ES15. I think I'll answer that. Yeah, well, I, I uh, oh, well, sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, ES15, uh, you should have a, a potable water rinse because the, uh, the, the quad content of that is about 3,100 ppm. So yeah, so it you needs, should, Yes, yeah. you should do a potable water rinse. But I think you did that uh, for the video just because of time constraints. Yeah, we did in it. We actually filmed it, but it got clipped. Uh, we're trying to keep it with realistic yes, time. Yes, but the yes. food, the, the caption there specifically mm -hmm. indicated that it was there. So always, yes. always potable water. Go back to our original ES15 YouTube video. Uh, that was shot in this room, actually, by the way. And I and I, yes. I, I think I mentioned it at least twice there. So that's good. Does the ES dishwashing liquid work well on greasy dishes? Can I use this in my commercial restaurant? It is fantastic for all use. You can even wash your car with it, Jimmy. Really? Absolutely. Well, that one, that one right there. Absolutely. Right, right wash, there. wash your car yeah, with exactly. it. Jimmy. Oh, this is okay. Great, well. great degreaser. Yeah, okay. that's what I used in the sink the other uh, yes. day, and uh, yes. and I got lots of bubbles there, and, yes. and uh, clean bananas and clean fruit out of it. There's mm -hmm. what I got. Um, by the way, some somebody asked too. Uh, um, you know, do with the bananas, um, why should I disinfect the outside of, because of the peel or skin, whatever it's referred to. And it's really, uh, the reason why you want to is because the insecticides, and pesticides and, and insect droppings and things like that. And what happens typically with a banana is people will peel the banana um, with their hands, but then they break off smaller bites. Yes. So they're coming in contact from the skin yes. to the actual Absolutely. flesh of, I think it's called flesh of the banana yes. or whatever. Yes. And and so that's that's really why it's there. So that's an outstanding question. Yes. Uh, Peter M here, all your disinfectants are registered with a DIN number or an EPP number in the US, EPP. Oh no, no, no. There's no such thing as EPP, okay. to the best of my knowledge. There is EPA. And what's that say? And that's the Environmental Protection Agency. And that's primarily uh, the agency that uh, uh, scrutinizes and certify uh, disinfectants and pesticides in the United States. Okay. Yeah, so in probably. Canada, though, mm -hmm. it will be the DIN which would be issued by Health Canada. Okay, okay. So probably more than uh, Peter's maybe may have put a P in. I think it was a, a typo. Yeah, so it definitely so. Peter, EPA, uh, for sure. Yes. Uh, Renata, uh, once again, thank you for showing us your manufacturing facility last week. It's nice to know of a strong Canadian company producing products that can help us clean better. Uh, keep up the good work. Well, let's thank Renata. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's very kind. We love compliments. We get lots of them, but boy, I'll tell you, you can't put a price tag on a compliment because uh, we're all working hard behind the scenes. And I think, Asquith, we got about one time for one more here okay. uh, is what we have. And I know we're answering them uh, online as well. Um, can I use ES-15 for my vehicles and my boats to clean and disinfect the surfaces that may be contaminated? Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, but I always, always say test uh, in an inconspicuous portion of that internal part of the vehicle just to make sure that everything is fine because every vehicle is not the same. Leather is not the same quality. Yeah, yeah. And but just to be sure, but the answer overall is yes. Yeah. Okay. Please disinfect. Yeah, that's good because some of those are fancy high-end leathers high -end that leather. may have a sensitivity, yes, so yes. color fast, color uh, fast things. So. So on. Yeah. Test, test for color yeah, fast. Good advice. And then we got time for one more because we always promise never to go over our forty-five minutes there. Uh, this one's Tammy, and it's a, actually it's a great question. What about uh, egg safety? When I fry eggs or use in my baking, is there any special instructions you recommend? It's a good very, question. Very, very, very good question. You know, eggs uh, are normally sanitized before they go into the crates. So the, the, you know, to demonstrate your process as well, you clean the outside of the, the, the crate, you open the crate, you, you'll wash your hands, obviously, you put the eggs away. But the, the big question is that once you're not using the eggs raw, you know, they're cooked high temperature, they're fried or boiled or put in the uh, into pastry or something like that, you'd be perfectly fine. That's good. So even an over easy egg? I mean even an yeah. over easy over egg. easy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So and I guess the eggs in a cake, uh, they get baked they at get a baked certain temperature. Or in and, bread or you know. in whatever pastry you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Well that's good. Well I, I think uh, that's great Asper. Thanks for joining us there today. That's uh that's all the time we have for today. It's Friday, May the first and uh, Hopefully you found food safety, uh, whether you're in a residential situation or you're in a, um, 
uh, commercial setting, I think you hopefully you've realized we've got all of the goods and the training programs and that for you to move forward and be safe, uh, especially when we start reopening again, which that's next week's topic is really how can we help you reopen and uh, we'll, you know, hopefully you join us for that. And uh, and Mike, once again, we just like to say thank you. Uh, we appreciate your time and uh, um, and involvement with us. This is the highest uh, registration count ever, which tells us that uh, we're doing something right. And we're here for you. So again, charlotteproducts.com, um, you know, uh, is, you can uh, you know call us any particular time and we'll answer. We've got a whole a number of resources to help you. But uh, again, stay safe, practice your social distancing and ask with your sign off is always keep washing those hands. Yeah, always keep washing your hands. So anyway, again, thank you. Have a, uh, a safe day and, uh, and weekend and we'll see you next week. Thank you.